Hello there guys, Moonlight Butterfly Miku back again and welcome back to my reading of the skin I'm in. We are up to chapter 13. It's getting good guys. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Why do teachers tell you stuff you don't want to hear? Like how wonderful their children are or how big their house is or what a quiet pretty neighborhood they live in? It's Miss Saunders' turn, I guess. She comes in telling us she's late because her toilet ran over and she had to clean her white carpets before they got stained. Like we really care. She presses her hands against her gray pinstripe pantsuit, then pulls the jacket sleeves down. No gold bracelet today, just a watch on one arm and a thin gold necklace around her neck. Miss Saunders is a motion machine this morning. She sets down her briefcase, throws her black bag into the closet up front, slaps her hands together like, a, like giant paddles, and tells everybody to get quiet. Then she fans herself with a her hand. My landlord had to come over. She's opening and closing drawers. <laughs> Looking for who knows what. I am never late. You guys know that. Now she's fingering the chalk, pacing the room. There's sweat on her face. She leans herself against the desk and rubs her chin like she's trying to find lost words. Well, let's get started, she says, not even seeing what we all see up there on the blackboard. Who can tell me what Shakespeare meant when he... She begins finally getting a good look at our faces. Everybody is quiet. Who read the 30 pages I assigned last night? Miss Saunders asks. Most of the hands go up, including mine, even though I didn't read none of it. Then let's get to work, she says, heading for the blackboard. When Miss Saunders sees what somebody's drawn, she stops in her tracks like she's been hit in the stomach. There's a woman up there's a woman's face up there on the blackboard. The left side is smooth and pretty. The right side is cracked and drooping like melting wax. It's done in pink, brown, and blue. It's a mess, that's all I can say. The teacher with two faces. Wiggly words spell it out in blue chalk. Miss Saunders' big hands erase the board with four quick swipes like a windshield wiper on full speed. Who can sum up yesterday's reading for me? John McIntyre. She says his name real weird, like maybe she ain't just asking him about schoolwork, but accusing him of drawing the picture. We all stare at John John. I know he didn't draw the picture. He came into class after me. Miss Saunders carries on with her lesson. Tell me about today's reading assignment. What would you do if you were Romeo and you loved the girl you couldn't have? Dump her, John John says, staring right at me. Why sweat it? There's plenty of girls out there. Everybody laughs. John John, you would not, Carrie Miller says. If you ever got a girl to like you, and we all know that ain't never gonna happen, you'd sell her your skin to keep her. Miss Saunders slaps her hands together to get off the chalk and asks Carrie to hold her thought. Next thing you know, Miss Saunders is sitting on the corner of Carrie's desk crossing her legs. Let John tell his story his way. But John, remember, this is the love of your life. Her folks are trying to keep you apart because you're not good enough, so they say. Nobody wants to talk about this stuff. I say half under my breath. Miss Saunders starts walking the classroom aisles. What do you want to talk about? She asks. Why Malik is so black, John John says. Miss Saunders' eyes shoots his way. Her smile is gone and her arms are folded tight. Sorry, John John says, shrugging and folding his arms too. Out of my room, John John. Miss Saunders points to the door. But... But nothing, she says. Man, I'm thinking, why can't she just let it go? Forget about it. Don't she see dragging it out only makes it worse? Next thing I know, John John's faking an apology to me, mumbling that he's sorry. Okay, everybody, let's get this thing back on track, Miss Sonda says. Romeo and Juliet, give me your thoughts, she says, unbuttoning her suit jacket. Romeo and Juliet didn't play by the rules. People had expectations for them. Wanted them to act and be a certain way, but they refused. Yeah, they died anyhow, Worm shouts from the back. So what is your point? You tell me. Anybody here believe strongly enough to die for something or someone? My homies, Eric yells. I give up blood for one of my boys. My mama, shouts does the. Nobody, says Jeremy. Ain't doing no dying for nobody but me. It's cold but true. Don't love nobody as much as my own fine black self, he says, kissing his arm from shoulder to fingertip. Now everybody's cracking up, including Miss Saunders. Yeah, Jeremy loves himself some Jeremy, Raina says. Jeremy starts rubbing his cheeks. You gotta love yourself, baby. If you don't, who will? Romeo loved Juliet. My father loves my mother. People love other people, Desda says. But when they're gone, who's gonna love you? When Romeo died, Juliet killed her, her stupid self. She loved him more than her own self. Now, do that make sense? 
Jeremy says. Miss Saunders is on the other side of the room now. She's standing right next to Jeremy. You're saying we shouldn't love people so much? No. I'm saying if you love yourself more than you love me, you will take good care of you. And you won't try to do me in because that's just going to cause problems for you. People who love who they are aren't, ain't going to make unnecessary trouble for themselves. Get it? Go ahead, Mr. Philosopher. Preach. John John says, slapping him, hot, slapping him five. Can we get back to Romeo and Juliet? I say, just to shut him up. But John John interrupts again. You probably didn't even read the book. Why are you always on Malika's case, John John? Jeremy asks. Shut up, John John says. Make me, Jeremy says, getting out of his seat. I'm smiling big time. John John is getting a taste of some of his own stuff. I like that. The period is almost over and you two ding-dongs are wasting time, Worm says. Everybody looks at Worm like he's crazy. Since when did he care about stuff like Romeo and Juliet? Be quiet and let somebody else talk, Carrie says. I wish somebody would kill themselves over me, Desda says. I'd kill myself if I had to kiss those crusty lips, John John butts in. I mean, ain't the most romantic thing in the world. Somebody who can't live without you, Desda goes on ignoring John John. No. I say before I even before I think about it, it ain't. I start chewing on my lip, trying to figure out my way out of this. But everybody's looking. I keep on talking. When my daddy died three years ago, mama fell apart. She couldn't eat. She couldn't sleep. She stayed up all night long, washing the scrub until her hands was raw. I say chewing on my finger. The class gets so quiet it's scary. I was 10 years old and brushing her teeth, feeding her oatmeal like a baby. She cried all the time. Last year, she finally came too. Got up one day, went to, and bought a sewing machine and started making clothes. Ain't never sewed nothing before. Just started day and night sewing. Some kids at the back of the room start to snicker and make smart remarks. Shut up, I'm thinking. Just shut up. The more she sewed them clothes, the better she got. She started picking up after herself. Got a job and all. No, ain't nothing good come from loving somebody so much that you can't live without them. I say, no good at all. Marla asked me why nobody in our family came to help me and Mama out when my daddy died. I say that we don't have no relatives, but that ain't the truth. Mama's got a sister in New York. Daddy had brothers all over the place, but they weren't close. And getting in touch with them would have meant taking me away or putting Mama in some institution someplace. I wasn't having that, so we lived off Daddy's Social Security and savings. The classroom gets quiet again. Then the bell rings, busting up the silence like a fist through glass. And that was chapter 13, guys. Wow, that was pretty deep when Malika started talking about her family issues and when her dad died and everything. That was pretty deep. So well, I'm glad she had the courage to come out and talk about that, even though these stupid ass kids was just making like remarks about it. But that was good for her. She's starting to find her voice. So I'm happy. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Tune in to the next vid where I read chapter 14. I hope you enjoyed this. Like, comment, subscribe if you want more. And I'll see you guys in the next vid. So this is Moonlight Butterfly Miku saying bye guys.